this is, appears to be, you know, a collaborative effort, um, you know, when Ashley Merchant is preparing to drop this motion to disqualify and is going to allege the affair, she says something in there uh, to the effect of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened or I'm scared or I'm nervous or something along those lines. And, and Bradley uh, goes on to say, you know, like you're one of the best lawyers I know, go be great. And uh, so he's encouraging her. And that was just earlier this year. If I remember the dates on those, so this puts all of this into, I think, much clearer context. The um, the court's not going to have to be able to consider all of these text messages. He can only consider the uh, the messages that were, uh, I think, confronted by the witness in court and were confirmed that those were his texts uh, and that things that had to do with a prior inconsistent statement. But if you remember, the, the prosecutor had objected saying, you know, judge under the rule of completeness, you know, you don't have all of the context. And so guess what? Okay, here you go. This is all the rest of it. If you want to satisfy about the rule of completeness, here it is. It's all going into the court and into the court record. So it's unclear if the judge is going to be able to consider everything that you just went over, but certainly this does put it all into context. And remember when uh, Anna Cross and others were saying she has no good faith basis for for raising these issues? Oh. Uh, obviously, we have a good faith basis when this witness is apparently helping her put together her pleadings, helping her helping her investigate the circumstances surrounding this uh, this affair. When did it start? Who else knew? What all's going on? You know, so this is one of the places where she's getting her information. This is what lawyers do. And, you know, in Georgia, we don't have the ability to do pretrial depositions with witnesses. If we did, we would have a, a hearing like yesterday, except there wouldn't be a judge and there wouldn't be a prosecutor objecting to every question. Uh, and you can get into a lot of this stuff under oath. So we are limited. Our hands are tied here in Georgia in pretrial discovery in criminal cases. So lawyers have to be creative in how they investigate things for, for their client. And oftentimes it means finding somebody who has information that's willing to talk to you. And so that's what's going on here. And this is the good faith basis. Yep. So she, she it, had it. And, uh, she you know, Fonnie it. Willis comes in and says, you know, these, your pleadings are all lies. I mean, she says that. And, uh, you know, so this is, we talked yesterday about Ashley Merchant. It's going to be able to clear the air. She's going to be able to show that she has a good faith basis and no, she's not lying. So, uh, and this is it. She's able to, uh, she's able to get it all out. This is absolutely stunning. I have never seen this level of dishonesty by officers of the court in my life. I mean, I don't, it's been a while since I've been in the courtroom practicing, but I practiced for 10 years. Um, I've never seen this. I, I firmly believe, it's my opinion, you had not one, not two, but three officers of the court take the stand and lie. And Nathan Wade lied about when this affair began. So did Fannie Willis. Um, I believe they lied about the cash payments, my opinion. And Terrence Bradley I believe was lying when he said he didn't remember any of those things. This is four, five, six weeks ago. He's, this was six weeks ago. He's, you're my friend. I want to help you. Keep my name out of it. Here's all the stuff that happened today. I don't recall. I don't recall. The, that text message you showed me does not reflect, uh, refresh my, my recollection at all. Keeps looking at Nathan Wade. I mean, this is outrageous. So, okay, maybe the judge can't technically consider all this. Although I don't know why. Why? I mean, this whole thing would be, wouldn't this have been submitted to the judge in connection with the privilege objections that we had to go through, wouldn't he have seen this whole thing? I don't. I don't think he did. I, I think that the plan was to ask the witness questions, and if the witness testified differently than would have been expected based on the the text communications that you. And that's, by the way, not the only. Clearly, they were talking that this was just the the written text version. There's you can read uh, when you read this, you can tell that they're having phone conversations and other things. So. Um, the expectation was is that he would testify uh, to the things that you just went over in this text, um, lengthy text thread. And uh, and so when that didn't happen, he was confronted with the some of the texts that would have um, been meant to directly refute his testimony or to say, look, well, this here, is a, but here's a prior the situation he's in. statement. OK, so let's say so. So perhaps I was wrong that the judge knows all the stuff I was reading. He knows a portion of this stuff. But the, the problem for him is given the news you just gave us, that the Georgia State Senate has subpoenaed the, these text messages, which I just read to you. The judge is going to hear them. Like, there's, they're about to become a public record. And there's no, he doesn't want to embarrass himself. 
he's still a human being. He's going to see the news articles about all of this and has got to make sure he doesn't look like a fool in going with, well, the CNN version. Terrence Bradley said he didn't remember anything, so I can't really put any weight on this allegation. Like, that's not going to happen now. Well, this is this goes back to something I've said from almost day one, once this whole thing about the affair and the money and all that broke. I, if I'm the judge, I'm probably going to halt the proceedings and I'm going to figure out some way to order an independent, thorough investigation because I need yes. to know if I'm the judge, is a fraud being perpetrated on my court? It's not going to happen on my watch. And if it's this serious, you know, I'm not going to leave it to the defense lawyers who, who are limited in their investigative resources. As, as good as these lawyers are, you know, we don't have the resources that cops have, that prosecutors' offices have, that the attorney general has. I'm going to, if I'm the judge, I'm going to figure out somebody who has these resources that can bring these people in, question them, find out the truth of the matter. How did this whole thing come up? When was the affair? Did people lie? If a, if a fraud has been perpetrated on my court, I'm going to want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, this is a unique situation. I've never in my life seen or, or heard anything like this. I was talking with a judge friend of mine yesterday at lunch. Uh, he and I agreed this would be a fantastic ethics kind of exam for bar uh, for uh, law school uh, because it's so complicated and there's so many uh, different ways to look at this, so many angles to go down. We've got to get to the bottom of it, and I think it's going to require an independent investigation at this point. Yes, because if there isn't one, with all due respect to Judge McAfee, who I believe has been doing a good job, he's going to look very foolish if he doesn't have this thoroughly investigated. We may have as many as three officers of the court perpetrating a fraud on the court. And if he just resolves it by saying, oh, not enough evidence to disqualify them, he's going to look like a fool. He can't allow that. That's just for his own dignity, for the dignity of the court, which must be respected lawyers, witnesses in general, cannot get away with this. Um, there, this is well beyond whether these two need to be disqualified. Really, they, they really need an investigation on whether they should be disbarred, disciplined at a minimum, and potentially could be facing criminal charges if, the, if, a, if an independent investigator finds these were material representations made under oath, knowingly false. That's what perjury is in the state of Georgia. Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process will help eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com MK and use the coupon code MK. That's bond, B-O-N, charge, C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash M-K and use the coupon code M-K to save 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.